Hello there everybody in YouTube land and welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the agenda setting function theory. It looks at how the media maybe is dictating our daily conversations and the media's impact on us, the viewers. This theory was developed in 1972 by Maxwell McCobbs and Donald Shaw. They saw a connection between what voters found important and what the media was talking about. And this theory is a little bit different than other theories we've talked about on this channel before. This one isn't like the media has all the power and it tells us what to think and how to think about it and every aspect of it. No, this theory is more about the media not telling us what to think, but what to think about. Now what that means is the media here, what they noticed was informing the daily conversation. It didn't tell people what to think on that particular issue, but it was telling people which issues to talk about. And that was the power of the media here. So the audience is listening. They're not necessarily fully passive and the media does have some power here. In 1988, this theory was expanded to include a concept called framing. Framing is when the media is trying to get the viewer to follow a certain line of thought. They have an end goal in mind. They want the viewer to come to a certain conclusion. And so they present certain facts or admit certain facts to get the viewer to come to that conclusion. But the goal of framing isn't for the viewer to know it. It's for the viewer to come to it naturally thinking they came to it themselves themselves, when in fact the way the story had been presented had shifted the conversation and had influenced the way the viewer was interpreting the information presented to them. One of the ways that we can see framing in action is actually through loaded language. Loaded language is when we see the media use certain terminology to try and persuade us to think a certain way. For example, CNN did a study on Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. What they found was 46% of the people they polled were opposed to Obamacare, yet only 37% were opposed to the Affordable Care Act, and 30% of the people they polled didn't even know what the Affordable Care Act was. This is a great example. The Affordable Care Act and Obamacare are the same thing. However, at the time, there was a lot of people that didn't like President Obama. And so the media, particularly more right-wing outlets, started calling it Obamacare. This then turned the conversation away from the Affordable Care Act and connected it to President Obama. A lot of people, particularly voters, who did not appreciate or like President Obama automatically heard Obamacare and decided that they didn't like it even though they didn't maybe know what it is. Other people too form their opinions in other ways. But this is one example of framing and loaded language and how it persuades the conversation. 30% of the people they polled didn't even know what the Affordable Care Act was, but they knew what Obamacare was. That can show the power of words. We can see this media theory broken down in the following way into a simple model. First, we're gonna have reality. This is what's actually happening within society. These are the things that are going on on the day-to-day -day level. Now, the next step of this, though, is the gatekeepers. These are the media gurus who are deciding what to pick and what not, what stories to cover, and what's important and what's not important. This then goes into the media agenda. They go through framing, they set the, how they're going to present the stories, what facts they will put into it, what facts they'll admit, and then that turns into public agenda. From public agenda, people start discussing things, they talk about it, and that eventually turns into policy agenda. Now the policy agenda is this is the government. This is where we have politicians who are trying to figure out what the voters want and they're gonna put laws in place that they think will be popular and help them get reelected. Now there is a little bit of a cycle that happens here. We can see that from the policy agenda, this will then go back and influence the media agenda because the policy will create news stories that the media will cover and that'll influence how they cover their stories. And the media agenda can also influence policy agenda and back and forth. Now, the real question here though is where's the audience in all of this? The audience, remember, is us. We're the ones who are consuming the media, watching the media, and commentating on it. Well, we're below all of this. We are influenced by reality because we live in society. We see stories every day. We live through them. So we have influences through there. But we're also then influenced through policy agenda, the public agenda, and the media agenda. So we are getting information from both aspects. And this is where then we start to have our own conversations and opinions. But a lot of this has already been dictated. Not necessarily what we think about it, but the content that we're discussing. So the question comes down to, is this theory correct? Is the media the ones setting the agenda for the country? Are they the ones determining what we're going to be talking about or not? Or is it the politicians? Or is it us that has more of a say on it? 
Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you better understand the agenda setting function theory. Make sure you check out some of my other media theories on the channel and some of the other sociology, human geography, and economic videos. I'm Mr. Sin. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, I'll see you online.